Hey folks, Eric the Viking again. I must admit I'm getting pretty uh, hooked on putting these videos up. It's, it's a funny thing really, I didn't think there'd be much of a demand for people to want to see this sort of thing. I love music, I love records, I love showing people my records. And I guess this is the best way to do it, you know. I, mean, I don't like to boast about things, but I'm sure people are interested to see all this sort of stuff. And it's great to, to talk to people about the same kind of stuff, you know. So, this is uh, the last video of the day, I promise. I'm going out later anyway. This is uh, recent stuff I bought. Uh, any any stuff. I'm going to do these regularly as well as focusing on artists and labels and things. I'll show you some singles first. The first one is One Word by Tony Williams Lifetime, UK pressing. Now this is quite an unusual single. If you're familiar with Tony Williams Lifetime, um, this was recorded during the Turn It Over sessions. Got Jack Bruce on vocals and bass, John McLaughlin on guitar, Larry Young on keys. Can't go wrong really. Tony Williams of course. But for years I, I didn't even know if this existed. Um, and I finally found one. Um, got it for about eight pounds. I'd say it's pretty rare. I've never seen one before. Very odd single. There was no way this would have got it in the charts or anything like that. And off the same seller I bought that from, I also bought the Monkey's Porpoise song, UK pressing, this is from the Head soundtrack, crazy film, crazy soundtrack. Um, this is another rare single, the only Monkey single I needed, R.I.P. Davy Jones, great band, of course. Um, got Tyrannosaurus Rex, Deborah, the original Regal Xenophone single. Don't see these much now. It's got Child Star on the B side. I've got one inch rock somewhere as well. And I also got off the same person, King of the Rumbling Spires, probably one of the rarer Tyrannosaurus Rex singles, original pressing. Great single. This wasn't on an album or anything. The only one I need now out of these early ones is By the Light of the Magical Moon, which is the rarest one. Which was one of my mum's favourite songs. Next, Yardbirds. Great single. I think it was the last one and it was the lowest selling one happening 10 years time ago a really good psych single um, interestingly I bought this recently came through the mail it's an Indian pressing which I didn't know and this is probably more desirable than an well not desirable but more collectible than an English pressing um, and, and by the looks of the vinyl and everything I think it was pressed in England just the labels are a bit different next up classic Funky Breakbeat, The Worm by Jimmy McGriff. Can't go wrong with that. That is an original English pressing on United Artists. Really nice copy. Didn't even know this existed until recently. Um, great track. Great guy. Electric Funk is one of my favourite albums on the Blue Note label. And another nice one from the Canterbury prog scene, which I'm a big collector of. O Caroline by Matching Mole. Robert Wyatt's band after Soft Machine before he um, had the horrible accident. With signed curtain on the B side, this is very rare. You'll never see this. Mint copy as well. So I'm pleased with that. Uh, albums next. I recently got, which I don't know why I haven't bought before. I love this album, it's just hard finding now. Vince Bush the Ruptum by the legendary Blue Cheer. I only really like their first two albums. I think it goes downhill after that. Maybe I need to listen to the other albums again, but this is just. Forget Sabbath, these guys were way ahead. They were there before Sabbath. This is the American pressing, I actually bought it from America on eBay. Lovely Phillips label. Really good album. It was just distorted to fuck and disgusting. Great stuff. Um, yeah, just, just brilliant. Lovely cover too, and I've got a t-shirt with this on it as well, which I sometimes wear. Well, the last time I wore it, one of the uh, Someone came up to me and said, why have you got yourself on a t-shirt? I have the same problem when I wear a Big Lebowski t-shirt. Maybe I should cut my hair. Next up, another great album, Before and After Science by Brian Eno. The first Eno album I've actually got. I love his albums, it's just finding the records. They're, they're so rare. This is the English pressing on Polydor. Great album with King's Lead Hat, his tribute to Talking Heads. And this comes with the art prints and the folder as well. And I got this fairly cheap. Um, Oh, you know, it's one of those things, I know it came about with the art prints and it usually goes for so much money, I thought, I just want the record, but 
I got this and it had the prints in it. So that was a bonus. Um, the Slits second album, which came in this plain sleeve on the Y label, which was manufactured by Rough Trade, uh, same label that the pop group were on, another one of my favourite bands. This album is not one of their best, it's, it's made to look and sound like a bootleg, it's very early demos and uh, nothing like cut, it's not as good as that, but a nice one to have, completes my Slits collection, so it's a nice one. This one's unusual. I don't know if many people know about this. This has come from Russia, apparently. It's a Zappa release <laughs> um, of a... I think it's only just come out. Um, I can't remember where I heard about it. Sorry about the glare. It looks like the Faust album, doesn't it? But it's actually a... Um, I bought it just to hear, because I've only heard it. A edit that Zappa made of an early... Ver I suppose you'd call it an early edit of Weasel's Rip My Flesh. But a lot of the tracks are different. Um, he edited. It's, it's called. They they call this FZ at Artisan because it was edited at Artisan Studios in Hollywood. It's got the mothers doing Wipeout on it. It's got a track called East LA, which later came on. You can't do that on stage anymore under the title. You call that music. A longer version. This is. Um, it's got um, a track which was on. You can't do that on stage. Called Squeeze It, Squeeze It. No, it was on Mystery Disc. It's called Weasels Rip My Flesh Here. Got Kung Fu, uh, Igor's Boogie, Passacaglia, which is like a vamp from King Kong, a solo part. There's a lot of good stuff. There's Help on the Rock from Festival Hall, the unedited version, which I've never heard before. I'd recommend this to any Zappa fan because these are not going to be around for long because um, we know how strict the Zappa family are with things like this. But a lovely record. And you can't really see it because of the glare, but oh, that looks better. I'd recommend that to any Zappa fan if you can find it. It's only just come out, so you should be able to. Next up, I've been after this for a long time, The Go Team, Thunder Lightning Strike, hard to find on vinyl now, and a great album. Um, how can you describe these guys? They're just sort of a mixture of samples and breakbeats and, and really funky stuff, and they're a proper band as well. It's the original pressing on vinyl. Uh, you don't see this much. I think it was quite limited at the time. I think it's been reissued, but even that's quite rare. Nice stuff. Um, I haven't even taken the price sticker off this yet. This is uh, James Blood Ulmer, Tales of Captain Black, a very good album with Ornette Coleman and Donardo Coleman, his son on drums. Um, just, I mean, look at that. This is on Ornette's label Artist House as well, and it's got a lovely booklet with it as well, with some crazy, crazy graphics. Um, and notation and things like that as well. Uh, this album, I mean, uh, I'm sure you guys know about James Blood Ulmer, just a crazy guitarist. I think the first thing he was ever on was Larry Young's Lawrence of Newark album, which is another great fusion album. But this is, um, well, you can tell Ornette was involved in it, let's put it that way. It's pretty out there, very good. The first track's my favorite one. It's just got the most ridiculous riff going on and on, it's great. Nice stuff. Uh, this is quite a standard one, but I thought I'd show it because the sleeve's great. Really early Chuck Berry English pressing on pie. Nice condition. One pound in a charity shop, thank you. And it's got too much monkey business on it, which is one of my favourite Chuck tracks. The sleeve's a bit tatty, but the, the record is mint, which is amazing for something of its age. I mean, this is 1960, the original pie R&B series. I keep doing it the wrong way. Great stuff. Can't go wrong with a bit of Chuck. And last but not least, another one of the bands I've only just got into, which is quite strange considering that I'm a big fan of Zapper and Beefheart, The Residents. I got into these about a year ago, and, and their albums are hard to find. This is my favourite album, the first one. Um, of course, the original pressing was the Beatles mock-up sleeve. This is the second pressing from 1977. Still quite rare, I'd say, and it's on their own label, Ralph Records. Um, pretty disturbing stuff. I mean, how can you categorise the residents other than bizarre? But I think in the 80s it gets a bit too. Maybe I need to listen more to the 80s stuff, but I prefer the 70s stuff definitely. But this is a superb album. It's just. Uh, when, I, when I first heard Infant Tango on this album, I was hooked. Um, and I don't know if you noticed, that is actually a picture of the Beatles just with prawns and starfish. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, obviously the original pressing got withdrawn because of the cover. I do have a reissue of it in there, um, but I wanted. A, but that is the original um, mix, which is in mono, and it, this they basically re-edited it and reprocessed it for stereo for this release. Much better. The original one, the tracks go on a bit, and that, I don't know. It sounds a bit more messy. Whereas this, they've done up the sound. They've re-edited it. Nice. I don't know if you can hear what's playing. This is Steve Grossman. This track is called The Way Out. This Way Out? It's on the album with uh, Inmate Man on it. Cracking album. Get it. Um, it's not that hard to get. And of course Steve Grossman played with Miles in the 70s. This album is funky as hell and it's got Don Elias on it. Sick. And Jan Hammer and Gene Perler. It's a great album. Very like um, I should be talking about this really, but seriously, yeah. But anyway, that's it for now. These are my most recent albums I've picked up. Be nice to get your feedback. Um, thanks for watching. I will probably be back tomorrow. Take care.